Hello everyone, welcome to Violet Adazar 2.0. Violet here, and today I am talking about how I decide which Earth 2 lands I'm gonna buy. For anyone who doesn't know what Earth 2 is or is new to Earth 2, you should watch this video where I explain the basics of Earth 2 before you get started. It'll be on the end screen of this video and also in my description box below. With that being said, the first thing I look for when I'm buying Earth 2 land is obviously buying class 1 or class 2 land. Now for class 1, for most part it's sold out, but there's still some people People that are selling it in the marketplace depending on your budget you might be able to afford it so check there if you really want class one land and for class two land there's still a good amount left it's going quick so if you haven't bought your class two land you might want to jump on it and like I said before you can also find it in the marketplace the reason I go for class one and class two land is for the land income tax class one has the highest land income tax class two obviously has the second highest the developers have told us that land class also have its benefits in a game we don't know what benefits Benefits those are yet but I'm holding out and I'm definitely sticking to class 1 and class 2 land but with that being said there's some cases where class 1 land might not be the best option for example if you only have an option to buy class 1 land in the middle of the ocean with no other land buyers around versus getting class 3 land in the middle of Manhattan near the Madison Square Garden or in Times Square, I would probably go for the class three land in Manhattan because I feel like I'll be able to monetize it in a better way. There's three different kind of lands I focus on buying. As we all know, Earth 2 is gonna be starting from scratch. There's not gonna be any buildings around, it's just gonna be the landscape. So with that being said, the three pieces of land I focus on buying are resources, touristy areas, and areas that have a nice view. I explained this in my last video, but just to recap, the reason why I'm buying touristy areas even if the land is starting from scratch is because people are naturally curious right so people will want to see what replaced the Eiffel Tower or the pyramid so it's always a good idea to buy touristy areas even if there's nothing there because it's always gonna be an attraction in terms of buying a nice view who doesn't like nice views that's kind of self-explanatory and then for resources we've been informed that there's gonna be resources scattered everywhere so I bought gold mines I bought copper mines I bought wood just different different resources and hopefully the game developers take into account that a lot of people bought resources so I'm hoping that they put more resources in that area and I think that's what they said they're gonna do that is what I know about it if I am wrong or if there's any more information that you know about it please leave it in the comment section below but apart from those three different lands I focused on buying a huge thing I also focused on is large intersections in different metropolitan cities and the reason I did this is for advertising purposes apparently earth 2 is going to be integrated some way with the real world so if i have ads up in earth 2 according to what the developers have said people in the real world can see it on their phone or with vr headsets so i decided to buy busy intersections in different cities just in case that comes into play i can put ads there and i can find different ways to monetize it even if it's not ads another thing i take into account when i'm buying land is making sure a lot of people have also bought in that area Area. I think that is really important. Naturally, people are going to gravitate where there's the most happening stuff going on. So if a bunch of people buy in one area, you can almost guarantee that they are planning on building things there. So you want to be part of a place that is lively. If you're among a sea of other people that are also creating cool stuff, that is a great place to be and it will create a bunch of foot traffic. So it's kind of helping each other out. It's kind of the same idea as having a mega city. It's the idea of having a bunch of people come together and build cool stuff and make the place place more enticing for people to come and visit. Another thing I take into account is when I'm buying a place that has a nice view, I am very cautious of what spot I buy my land in. I have to make sure my land is facing a nice area. For example, if I buy a place near a volcano or on a hilltop, I want to make sure that whatever I choose to build on that land is facing exactly where I want it to face. So if it's a volcano, I wouldn't buy too close to the volcano because then you can't really see it that well. I might buy it a bit further off that way in the distance you can see the volcano and you can see it in its full glory and it looks nice or if I'm buying on a hilltop let's say there's other hilltops and I want the optimum view I'll make sure that I position my land in a way that I can get the best view of all the hilltops without one big hilltop beside me blocking everything else just make sure that when you're buying somewhere that has a nice view you're also positioning your land or choosing land tiles so you can get the best out of the view another thing that I 
really try to do when I'm buying land is buying a square or a rectangle. I don't like buying a line. I don't like buying little pieces. I like it to be a nice clump because it just makes it easier to build up. So I really try to buy squares or rectangles or something similar to that that just has a more squared look rather than a long or displaced look. And the last thing I've been focusing on, I made it a point to do it up until recently and still do it, is when I'm buying a big piece of land, I might not buy it all at the same time. If I'm planning on buying 100 tiles, I might split it up into 10 tiles per purchase or 20 tiles per purchase, just so if I decide to sell a piece of that land, it's easier for me to sell without having to sell the whole thing. Because as of right now, on Earth 2, you have to sell your land the way it was bought. So if you bought 500 tiles, you have to sell those 500 tiles together. Earth 2 developers said that they're going to eventually make it so that people can split up their lands and sell it separately or put together their lands even if they bought it separately and sell it together but until then i just wanted to make it easy for myself just in case oh bonus people have already been talking about this but when you're buying resources be sure to buy the actual mines and where the resources come from and not where they're being processed i don't even know if i'm using the right word processed if you're trying to buy diamonds don't buy a jewelry store tile or don't buy a factory where the diamonds are being curated or produced or i'm not even sure the right word to use in honesty guys buy it where it actually is in the dirt that's another thing that i've heard a lot of people talking about and i realized in the earlier stages when i would go to buy resources i'll see a lot of people buying the factory and not necessarily the ground where the resource is being produced at but that being said that is all the things i look at when i'm trying to buy land i hope this helped you out in some way if there's other things that i didn't see in this video that could help me out be sure to leave it in the comment section below now i just have a few words to say about the mega city omega omega was made by myself and two other people one of them is actually number like six or seven on the leaderboard actually and it's a mega city in port sudan so if you haven't bought there yet you should definitely buy it you can use my referral code which is right here is also going to be in the description box below and we have big plans for it we are super excited to get into it and to start building so make sure to go buy your plot of land at omega thanks for coming to my ted talk i'm kidding thanks for coming to this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already consider subscribing to my channel i'm gonna have a whole earth to play this if you made it to the end of this video leave this emoji in the comment section below and i'll catch you in the next one bye